The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. Some Ether bulls are enthusiastic about Ethereum's upcoming London hard fork, an upgrade initially expected to happen today that has been pushed to tomorrow. The upgrade aims to reduce transaction fee volatility and the network's net issuance of new Ether. Joining us now is Lex Sokolin, co-head of Consensus Global Fintech. Welcome, Lex. So prior to yesterday, Ether was on a 12-day winning streak, its longest ever, in anticipation of this London hard fork. Um, can you explain what this upgrade is all about? about? Sure. There are uh, a lot of technical things that are going into the upgrade, but kind of the, the thing that most people are excited about is the, the split of the transaction fee to, um, to kind of fund or, or put the transaction into the block uh, from just a single auction mechanism to a mechanism that splits uh, into a base fee um, and then into a tip fee for a miner. And so the, the net effect of that uh, is supposed to be that uh, transaction fees are more predictable. So if you've ever tried to buy something uh, like a cat NFT or an avatar or make a DeFi trade, and then that didn't land because you didn't pay enough gas, you know that user experience would improve. And then the second part that's also kind of built into the logic is that um, the base fee is going to get burnt. And so there is... Um, there's kind of inherent built-in inflation in the protocol um, that rewards miners and in the future will reward validators. And so now there's going to be a mechanism that takes some of that inflation off the table. Not all of it, but some of it. So, so Lex, Lex, how does this change? If I understand the hard fork correctly, um, it's the, it, what's going to happen is that these fees are going to become more predictable, but they're not necessarily going to become lower, right? I mean, that's been you know, a big controversy about Ethereum lately, especially with the NFT boom, is that just gas fees are too high. The hard fork is not necessarily going to address that in the short term, right? Yeah, I mean, software and capital markets and human nature uh, are all, of course, in a soup uh, when looking at Ethereum, but they're different things. So the reason that fees are high is because uh, the demand for computation on Ethereum for block space uh, tends to spike and uh, is really high when people rush to buy NFTs or are really interested in some uh, yield farming protocol or some particular use case, and so in that case, the you know the supply of computation on block space is limited, demand goes up, um, and what happens very often is that within the transaction there is even more capital market stuff going on. So you'll have you know arbitrage bots trying to bid against each other to uh, make some sort of transaction, which drives the auction prices up and so on. And so, um, you know, this is a market venue question. And what the, what the upgrade is attempting to do is to uh, create some mechanisms that, that dampen that uh, kind of rush and that decrease so it's more predictable for all the participants, whether it's, you know, miners or users and so on. Um, I'd say the, the real change, if, if you want gas fees to um, meaningfully decrease, is going to be over time either with ETH2 and the upgrades that, that are leading, that, leading us that way, or it's with scaling solutions like um, Polygon, Arbitrum, and others that are uh, already plugged into Ethereum that you can use and, and do transactions quite cheaply. So Lex, how does this change what businesses you guys get into going forward and how does it affect the portfolio of companies Consensus currently has? Are, are you doing anything? Are, are they doing any changes? Are you setting up like, you know, coordination seminars with, with, with all your portfolios? So what, what, what's happening? Yeah, so for Consensus, there are... Uh, there are really three things that we do. The first is uh, user enablement, so helping people access Web3, uh, the decentralized web, DeFi, digital objects, and so on. Um, and so we do that through MetaMask, which is um, now I think something like uh, nine and a half million monthly average users. Uh, and MetaMask plugs into Ethereum, it plugs into uh, Polygon, uh, you know, the Binance Smart Chain, and all of the places where uh, a Web3 economy has emerged. You know, whether you have this fork or not, whether you're using an L2 or a sidechain or, or some other mechanism, end of the day, this stuff uh, settles on Ethereum. That's where most of the trust is generated from the decentralization. Um, and so for consensus, kind of powering that through user experience is really key. You know, the, the second thing that we do is developer enablement. So if you think about the 
iPhone App Store or the Alibaba ecosystem, you know, if there are no applications, none of this stuff matters. You know, and so you need entrepreneurs, you need builders, you need people to um, write decentralized software, to integrate it, to, to make it all work together. And so we, we offer a lot of tooling uh, to help people do that. So again, as new networks plug in to the Ethereum ecosystem, you have to create integrations and APIs and, and various software tools to do that. You know, so it's not just the computation on, on Ethereum or on Polygon, but it's also things like Filecoin. How do you store your data? You know, how do you think about identity? All of these things we're, we're working to kind of plug together. Um, and then finally, it's the kind of the institutional arm of the business and the effort for, for all of us is to push along the CBDC narrative and, and the work there, the digital asset narrative narrative. And so with things like Quorum, which is Enterprise Ethereum, you know, we're working with uh, quite a few different governments and entities to uh, kind of push, push the CBC projects from POC to, to uh, actual use. So Lex, yesterday, um, Gary Gensler kind of made it sound like a lot more tokens might be classified as securities in the future. And I just wanted to hear your take on, is there any world in which Ether could be considered a security and why or why not? Oh boy, that is, uh, that's certainly beyond my pay grade in, in many different ways. Uh, you know, I'm a, uh, a, a simple advocate for, uh, for financial uh, technological innovation. You know, I think for any global system, uh, if we want to be adopted by the uh, billions of people across the world, and that includes the US and Europe and uh, you know, South America and the Philippines with, uh, with Axie Infinity and the, the NFT games uh, that are going on, as well as within China, if we want that footprint, which the internet has, and which is the goal for, I think, all of Web3, then we, f we have to figure out a non-confrontational stance with uh, governments and regulators and uh, oh, find the path to, to coexisting. I mean, okay. it, I don't think there is a desire to destroy this innovation ecosystem. Um, yeah. And in particular, because I think there, there's actually like a geopolitical um, uh, narrative behind Ethereum. If you look at... Uh, all of DeFi and all the stable coins, the hundred billion dollars worth of stable coins on ETH, uh, that is all US dollar denominated. So I think there's actually quite a strong national interest uh, right. and a dollar story behind uh, these ecosystems. Lex, we got to wrap up, but just one last question if you, if you could be brief. You know, Coindesk's Christine Kim has reported there were bugs on the testnet last week, specifically with Geth uh, leading up to this London hard fork. And Geth is the most popular software we're used to connect to Ethereum. So I'm wondering, what are the greatest risks of this upgrade? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think with any technology, there, there are going to be risks and technologists are doing their best to mitigate them. There's an amazing amount of talent and, and testing going on. Um, there are also multiple clients that you can use. Geth is fantastic, but you can use something like um, you know, Besu, uh, Hyperledger Besu, or, or uh, other clients. And so I, I know that a lot of eyes are on this. Um, and um, uh, if, if, uh, there's, there's, I can't, I can't point to some particular financial or, or technological risk. I think this is right. just what we'll it's just like to, to develop the ecosystem. Happens.